Welcome back to Discovering After Effects. My name is Casey Ferris with RampantDesignTools.com. Today we're going to talk about mats. And mats kind of do the same thing as masks, but in my opinion they're a little bit more versatile, more useful. So if you look next to the transfer mode on a layer, you'll see its track mat setting. So if you click on this little none thing, a menu pops up. And it allows you to set the kind of mat for the layer. A mat is basically a layer that controls the transparency of another layer. So simple example, I'll make a new comp and make a solid and I'll make it light blue and I'll make another solid and I'll make it purple. Okay, so I have my purple solid and my blue solid. I can set my blue solids track mat to alpha mat and what that does is it looks at the layer above it which in this case is purple solid and it sets the alpha channel of this purple solid to the blue solid. So I'm going to hit alpha mat and boom. So whatever the alpha channel is, the transparency channel for the purple solid is, that affects the blue solid. So if I were to draw a mask on my purple solid, then I'm affecting the alpha of the solid, the transparency of the solid. So I have this weird little shape thing, and if I click my little eyeball here, you see it applies to the blue as well. What's interesting is I can move this blue layer around and it's still behind this purple solid. And so this purple solid is kind of acting like a window to let us see into the blue solid. So I can move it anywhere I want behind that window. And so maybe I'll just leave it here and I can move my purple solid around and look around almost like a flashlight beam or something on the blue solid. So that's basically how an alpha mat works. And so if you hit alpha mat, it just uses the alpha channel of the layer above it. Alpha inverted is obviously the inverted. And so if I hit inverted, it's gonna be everything but that alpha channel. And I also have luma mat, um, but I'm gonna get into that in just a minute. So how do we use an alpha mat? So I have some footage, which is actually just a still animated, but for the sake of this lesson, it might as well be a pan. Let's say I want to put some words in here. What I can do is I can duplicate my footage and I can draw a mask around this pole and I can put that word behind this pole. And obviously you take some time doing that, but that's basically the idea that the words go behind the stoplights and everything. So I have my signs and my lights on one layer, my yay mats text on another layer, and my background layer. But when I move, it doesn't really work. It's kind of annoying. And so I can do a couple things. I can either take my mask path and animate it, which in this case will work pretty well. So I can move this over. And now, even though it's kind of a crappy mask, it works pretty well. But if I do all this work on this layer, roto out my signs and my lights and make it perfect, I'm kind of stuck with using that layer. Um, maybe I wanted to put an adjustment layer on and, and just affect these lights, or, or maybe I wanted to add some depth of field effects. It kind of sucks because I don't really have an easy way to put this mask on another layer. I can kind of copy and paste it, but it might not show up right, and it's just... It's an okay way to do it and you can get by, but here's the cool thing about mats. I spent a little bit of time making a mask for this pole and the sign and the lights on a solid layer. So now I just have this purple layer that's completely separate from my footage. This is just a solid. So this is a great thing to use for an alpha mat. So now I can take my yay mats layer and I'm gonna set my track mat to alpha inverted because I want my yay mats layer to be behind this pole. And so I'm gonna to go to alpha to inverted and boom, it's behind everything. So now I wanna get my mat to move along with my footage. I could of course animate each one of these masks, but the cool thing about having a mat is I can move the entire layer and they'll move all together. And so I can take this layer and just animate the position Right here is perfect, so I'm gonna hit my stopwatch and I'm gonna to go to my end and I'm just gonna move this over, probably zoom in a bit, make sure I'm doing this right and and set that layer right where I want it. So now I have my perfectly rotoed layer and it's especially easy, roto is not usually this easy 
um, just because I have this still that's animated and it's moving at a perfect speed. So, so now I can turn off my mat and my yay mats layer is behind all my stuff with not that much work. I just had to trace one frame and then I made two keyframes here. Not too bad. And the cool part about this is I can duplicate this mat and let's say I wanted to add an adjustment layer. I can add an adjustment layer and set that track mat to alpha mat. And so now this adjustment layer is just gonna affect this pole and the things on the pole. So maybe I wanna make that darker. I can just darken down that pole, no problem. And all my animation and everything is still there. And it's just kind of a nice way to duplicate your masks and, and kind of save them as its own layer and kind of keep things organized a little better. So that's why I like alpha mats so much. Another cool thing about alpha mats is sometimes I don't even have to draw a mask on a layer to get the same effect. So I'm going to make a new text layer and I'm going to call it alpha dog because that is the coolest thing I could think of with the word alpha in it. So there's my alpha dog text layer. And so now maybe I want to throw a texture on there. I'm going to grab this texture. It's kind of this purple wood. So let's say I want to make these letters kind of this wood texture. What I can do is just take this texture and set the alpha mat to my alpha dog text layer. And there it is. That took like two seconds. I have my texturized letters. You can also use this to kind of add a texture to a certain layer without adding it to the bottom layers. Now check this out. I can duplicate this alpha dog and maybe I'll make it this orangish color. There's my alpha dog layer and I'm going to put it under my texture. Now I can set the mode of my texture, which is still using alpha dog as a mat. I can set that to multiply and there I have a texture on my colored layer. And so now I can change this color without doing anything complicated and I still have my texture. So pretty cool. Okay, so now let's talk about Luma mats. Here I have a still and I'm just gonna show you really quick what a Luma mat does. I'm gonna make a new solid, doesn't matter what color it is, and I'm gonna go to effects and I'm gonna generate a ramp. And this just makes a black and white gradient. So I'm gonna take this gradient and call this my Luma mat. And I'm gonna set my track mat for this layer as a Luma mat. So now instead of using the layer's alpha channel, it uses the luminance channel. See, that's where the luma comes from. See, see what they did there? Anywho, basically black pixels mean transparent and white pixels mean opaque. So there it is, transparent to opaque. You can also do luma inverted and it inverts it. Pretty complicated, huh? So now that you're an expert at Luma mats, I'm going to show you a really, really cool trick. This is one of the most useful tricks I've ever learned, and it's making a Luma mat out of footage. So here I have some footage of this water tower, and it's bouncing up and down because it's a handheld shot. And here's the thing. The sky looks pretty good, but this, um, but this building is a little bit dark, and let's say I want to make that a little bit lighter. There's a few ways to do that. I can trace over it with a mask and lighten it and then roto it with a mask. I can also do that with an alpha mat, but because this is such a high contrast line here, I can pull a luma mat from this footage and save myself a lot of time. So check this out. I'm going to duplicate this footage and I'm going to apply an effect to it under color correction, colorama. And what Colorama does is it takes information from this image and it maps it to a color. And so the default input phase, that's like where you get the information, is from intensity, which is brightness, basically. And so output cycle, and so what it's doing is making the brighter pixels this pink, blue, green color, and the darker pixels the yellowish, orangish, red color. So under my presets, I can go to ramp gray, and that pretty much turns it into a black and white image. So the brightest pixels are white, darkest pixels are black. So it actually makes sense instead of looking like some kind of acid trip thing. So I can click anywhere in this wheel to add a swatch. So I'm gonna click over to the left and I'm gonna add pure white and click onto the right and I'm gonna add black. And so this is mapping a certain brightness of pixels to pure black or pure white. 
and you'll see how all the darker pixels here have turned almost to black and I can move this and change it a little bit. I can also bring my white over and you see how it blows out the sky there. That's good because because I want to have the least amount of gray possible. One thing I don't want to do is have these right next to each other though because it makes the edges too sharp and it ends up looking unnatural so I'm just gonna leave a little bit of gray there and so I have this nice ridge between this building and the sky pretty well defined now I'm gonna make a new solid just so I can see what I'm doing and I'll make it orange and I'll put it in between my layers and I'm gonna name them just so I don't get confused Luma Okay, and I'm going to set this track mat to Luma Mat. So now I can see all my orange is actually the white pixels, and so I get a pretty good image of my sky, basically the whole sky. The only problem is there's some stuff going on down here, and the water tower looks a little bit weird. So I'm going to delete my solid, and I'm going to duplicate my footage. So here's footage 2. I'm going to call this brighter. And then footage is going to be regular. Yeah, biter. All right, awesome. So brighter. Now I'm going to take this brighter footage and go to color correction and go to curves. And I'm just going to focus on how this building looks. And so I'm going to boost some of the midtones and just make that building look a little bit better and I can see the difference here and so just brightening out that building but it's also brightening my sky which is exactly the reason why I pulled my luma mat so I'm gonna set this brighter layers track mat to luma inverted because I only want it to affect the pixels that are black so luma inverted and there we go, I have basically a normal looking sky and I have a better looking building. And so the only problem is, and it doesn't look too bad, but this water tower is looking a little bit weird. You can see the difference there. And so I wanna keep those nice crisp blacks. So now I have basically 90% of the work done on my shot because this Luma mat moves exactly the same as the footage because it's, because it's taken from the same footage. So now I just want to make my water tower look a little better. So I'm just going to select my brighter layer and just draw a mask, eh, something like this, and just kind of mask off this right part of this image. I'm going to hit M for mask, and I'm going to set this mask to subtract. And I'm going to feather it quite a bit, just so nobody knows. So now you can see the difference of my mask this water tower still looks good, but I'm brightening the building up. That's what I want, that looks good. And now all I have to do is just pretty roughly animate my mask. And because it's feathered, and because it's a subtle change anyway, you probably won't notice this edge very much. I'm just gonna really roughly animate my mask path. And make it so it's brightening everything but that water tower. So I don't want that water tower to be bright. I hate water towers. That's not looking too bad. Of course, if I were rotoing this, this would be horrible and it would take a long time. But just because I'm basically just limiting the effects of that layer, this will do pretty well. And so let's look at it. So there's my footage. Can't tell I messed with it at all, but this looks better, almost like a HDR video or something like that. So that's just a simple way to save yourself a lot of work by using a Luma mat instead of rotoing all these edges. And that is a huge time saver. And time savers save time. And they always have. Cool, so now you're basically an expert at mats. Man, you're like doing awesome. You're good at masks and mats and adjustment layers and all sorts of nerdy After Effects things. People are going to show up at your house and be like, please fix my footage. And you'll be like, I got my own stuff to do. You know, you can't be this good and not like be doing something like a movie or something. I don't know. I'm Casey Ferris with uh, RampantDesignTools.com. You're awesome at mats now, and uh, we'll catch you later.